All right, you all ready? Good evening and welcome to the Cabarrus County Board of Education's Tuesday night, April the 13th, 2021 meeting. This is the meeting for the public hearing on the middle school uh, student realignment. The board has currently been in closed session. We have just voted to go back into open session. And now I would ask that we have a motion uh, to adopt, adopt the agenda as presented at 4.01. So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Blackwell. Second. And a second by Ms. Adcock. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And with that, I am going to uh, take a motion that we open the public hearing on student realignment and input from our speakers. Okay. I have a motion by Ms. Blackwell and a second by Ms. Sandage. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you. We have 25 speakers. Actually, we have 24 speakers now. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit lengthy. Everyone bear with me, but it is something that I legally have to do. So before the speakers uh, enter the room, I'm going to give notice. Notice is hereby given that the Cabarrus County Board of Education will hold a public hearing regarding the Cabarrus County School Student Realignment. The location of the hearing is held here at the Cabarrus County Schools Education Center boardroom at 4401 Old Airport Road, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. Persons wishing to address the Cabarrus County Board of Education on the Cabarrus County Schools student realignment may register to speak with the executive clerk via email at karina.neville at cabarrus.k12.nc.us no later than 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, April the 13th, 2021. Speakers must include their name, group name if applicable, address, and phone number. Speakers will need to remain in their vehicles. A member of our staff will call the phone, will call the phone number provided once it is their turn to enter the building. Speakers must wear a mask, will be temp temperature screened before entering the building, and will need to complete a COVID-19 screening. No one is permitted to enter the building with any speaker and speakers will need to exit the building immediately following their comments. Each individual speaker may address the board for three minutes and individual speaking on behalf of a group may speak for five minutes. Groups must select one speaker to represent them. Realignment information can be found at ccsrealignment.com. Karina Neville, executive clerk, has informed us that we have 24 speakers and we will begin the, the night uh, at this point in time. So I would ask that the first speaker who is Shannon Young, Ms. Young, are you ready? So we are going to speaker number two. All right. So speaker number two is Liz Altschuler. And you just let me know when you are ready and they will begin the time clock. Okay. Ready? Is the button? Okay. Okay, there we go. Very good. Your time starts now. Hello, everybody. Liz Altschuler. I'm here for the middle school realignment. I thank you for allowing us here tonight to speak. Um, tonight, you're going to hear from a handful of concerned parents, um, community folks and residents of the west side of the county. We're a small representation of a much larger group. As you know, you all received over a thousand handwritten letters of concerned residents with the plans that are being presented to you. We have over um, 1,500 people that have signed a change.org because they don't agree with the plans that are being presented. And we have a significant group of over 600 on a Facebook page that all talks about some of the issues and concerns that we see with the plans being presented. Just want to let you know, we are asking that you review the plans. Don't accept the answers that you're receiving from Mr. Cropper about the Green Plus plan. Ask questions, validate those responses. One of the things that I want to share with you tonight is this great chart that he put together on our behalf covering the Green Plus plan. This was not done proactively. This was done reactively because the parents asked for this comparison chart. You'll notice specifically on the middle school realignment, he is stating that we are equal when it comes to the middle school to high school feeder plan. That is not correct. Who's going to validate this information? We're expecting a third party consultant who's no longer a third party consultant to review the plans and give us honest to goodness feedback. In my opinion, he stopped being a third party consultant the minute that the community put together a plan 
that was different than his. He's now a business owner defending his business, defending his reputation, defending his PhDs, defending his employees, defending everything that he brings to the table because he doesn't want to show that parents can put together a better plan than he can. So I ask you to please look at those numbers. Based on our research, the plan today that he presented to you takes 900 students from middle school and breaks their feeder pattern. It doesn't correct that. It doesn't make it better. In fact, I think it was Denise, you asked him um, the impact. That was an important number to you, right? He said only 300 students were impacted. Those 300 students are our students and it's a negative impact, not a positive impact. The reality is, those 300 students are being added to the 500 that are already sitting in a broken feeder pattern today. He's not correcting anything, he's making it worse. How can you guys vote on a plan that makes it worse? We're going from 500 broken to now 900 when you add our kids, 390 kids to that. Don't vote on that, ask questions. We've offered to sit down and review our plan with you. We've offered to go over the numbers. We've offered to review it, and not one person has taken the opportunity to sit down with us and let us present our deck to you. Let us present our numbers to you and answer the questions that you have. Don't accept answers from him without validating them with us. Please don't do that. That's not fair. It's not fair to our children. It's not fair to our community, and we expect more out of elected officials. Okay, now we will go down to now speaker number three, who is Pamela Escobar. Ms. Escobar. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for having us. Last night I heard the words objective, transparent, and impact. I want to thank you for those of you who recognized all the work that we have been doing through this process. I am so proud of my neighbors for being solution-oriented. They are good with numbers. I'm good at talking to people. So I interviewed some of the kids in our neighborhood to give you a sense of what they're worried about. And I know you received their letters and now I will read what they told me. So a third grader, Emily said, I just think that you have to listen to the people it's actually going to affect. Fifth grader, Rochelle said, I don't know much about an IB, pro, IB school, so that's gonna be a problem. I don't know how to prepare for that or how am I gonna do in Winkler with that IB program. Third grader, Caroline said, I'm gonna lose friends that I already had I'm gonna make new friends and lose them. And Caroline's older brother, who's now in sixth grade at Harris Road, spoke from experience. He said, I mean, middle school, there's a lot of work. So all of all the times to get torn away from friends, it's not the time. The kids I spoke to understand the very real consequences of the vote that will occur next week. Their safety is put at risk. They have no choice when it comes to IB and they are ripped from their peer groups during a critical time. These kids aren't objective. They are looking at the real impact on their lives, just like the members of the Public Advisory Committee who are looking out for their own neighborhoods. No one in our neighborhoods were part of the PAC, but a fellow Cox Mill Elementary neighborhood had a member on that PAC, so somehow the recommendation that you're considering conveniently leaves that neighborhood off the solution for Harris Road overcrowding, but not ours. So let's look at impact. Impact is a word that has a negative connotation. That's what you guys were talking about, right? However, the Green Plus Plan corrects past mistakes related to feeder patterns for students. Yes, more students are impacted by the Green Plus Plan, but that doesn't mean they're impacted negatively. Students in no north of 73 will join their peers at Northwest Cabarrus Middle School and then transfer together to Northwest Cabarrus High School. Similarly, students south of 85 will move to Winkler, which feeds into West Cabarrus. Both moves keep large groups of students together through middle and high school fostering relationships and a sense of community. And lastly, transparent. Let's look at the communication. A website is not the only means of communicating that is available. You've had closed meetings with the Public Advisory Committee and the IPT and with board members. I can't believe the audacity of Cropper and the rest of the board applauding these folks for being transparent. How? Lack of public access to observe and participate in meetings, use of a public advisory committee where the names of the members were never made public, and a heavy reliance on a website that had no rhyme or reason when information was published. And tonight, we can only speak in person, not allowing for access to people concerned about the pandemic. 
Only you and the board can truly review the rec recommendation on the table and correct it. You can make sure that this is an objective process to look at how students are impacted, good and bad, Ms. Escobar, giving this more time, having, and I just ask this, we are asking for another survey. You did a survey, they didn't even talk about those results. You should have a survey on this new recommendation. You just announced it last night. We have a week and you don't know what the community thinks. All right, thank you thank for you. being with us. All right, speaker number four. And speaker number four, I'm gonna ask you to state your name, okay? Yes. Lopa Mudra Dasroy. And you are ready to begin. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to voice my opinion on behalf of our community, and I'm grateful to the board for your time and consideration. I'm aware that the board is well versed with our concerns, but I would like to bring into limelight a few episodes. Our Green Plus plan is a better option for the entire community, but why is this plan being persistently ignored and not considered for review, which is unacceptable? Board has recommended the final IPT plan that moves 380 students to Winkler, making up 25% of the impacted students. We are discussing the 380 students whose appeal is at stake. They are now apprehensive, emotionally vulnerable, and we as parents, is this the reward for believing the system? Coming to my story, we moved to Christianbury in 2009, and we have two sons, Agastya and Agnea. Many parents asked me if I would consider my kids going elsewhere, but I never thought twice as I knew we were sending both my kids to Harris Road Middle School. Augusta is enrolling at Harris this fall as he is now in fifth grade. When he was in the fourth grade, we had a discussion and I asked if he would prefer Harris or some other schools. He didn't take a second to answer. It was Harris because he wanted to be with his friends and I respected that. I would like to ask the board what do I tell Agastya when I have to uproot him in 2022 and put him to Winkler? We are talking about the demographics distance, which are highly important. But what about the emotional turmoil a student can go through, which is going to impact his academics as well as social skills? Hopefully on the humanitarian ground, 380 students and their families are important for you. And also if we consider statistics, 25% cannot be ignored as outliers. Now from the parents' perspectives, when I was getting the information about the rezoning developments, in my mind, I could not believe as I had faith in the board in the system. For the board to hear our request, there's so much of hard work going on behind the scenes, the dedication and ongoing efforts from the community, including our young children over the past few months. Even today, I have come with hope because if the decision is not in our favor of the Green Plus plan, then it is not a temporary scar, but this reflects that you failed us. This will affect the minds of the community, the students, as there will be a feeling of disbelief, frustration, anger, and above all, mistrust. This will impact the future, the harmony, and I believe you will not let that happen as I trust our esteemed board. That's my request, my ask, as I demand justice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will next have speaker number six, which is Brian Patterson. Mr. Patterson, just let me know when you're ready. Absolutely. Good okay. evening. And I want to thank you first for your service. Uh, my dad was a school board president when I grew up, so I understand the sacrifices and the time that it takes to be a concerned and involved member of the school board. So I'm not here to yell at you like some other people may. I have some valid points which I feel like I need to make because my kids are being impacted by this decision. Um, two of my three kids have gone to these schools and they've been in Cabarrus County Schools since we moved here. Part of the reason we moved to the, to the home that we did was the schools that were in place um, when we did move here. So I would prefer, obviously, all three of them to have the legacy of going to the same school. Um, the little guy is, is pretty excited about that and wants to go to the same school his kid, you know, his brother and sister did. Uh, as a profession, I'm a risk and insurance manager. Um, I tend to work with a lot of the school districts uh, across the state of North Carolina and South Carolina. 
And one of the things I'm tasked with is to look at things from a safety perspective. So I'll give you a little bit of different taste in regards to uh, the surveys and things that are being done. Um, some other people will talk to you about those. My concern more is the amount of time uh, spent on the, on the roads, school buses are gonna spend on the roads, the wear and tear on the buses themselves, uh, the costs associated with the fuel. Um, it, it, the roads that we know in Cabarrus County have been built um, piecemeal to keep up with, with the developments that are being built. And obviously overdevelopment has consequences as we can see. Um, growth is a good thing, but too much growth can be a bad thing. Um, having our kids being sent uh, across town and uh, crossing 85 uh, under uh, adverse traffic conditions, um, assuming that things are going to start to get back to some, you know, some semblance of normalcy uh, at some point soon will certainly mean there's going to be an increase in traffic. And my concern more than anything is the amount of time that kids are spending on buses, um, the aggressive driving uh, that seems to be par for the course these days uh, is a concern of mine. And like I said, I work with a lot of school districts around the state in regards to being asked overtly, what can we do to be safer? What can we do to be better? What can we do to be more efficient? And a lot of those things come back to transportation issues. And unfortunately, um, we don't have a lot of control over other people on the roads. And I know that Cabarrus County Schools um, has made efforts to hire very highly trained school bus drivers and operators. But even with that being said, a commute that's you know very short to the middle school that we're currently at seems to be a much more appealing than one that takes us uh, onto the other side of 85. So I'd like to consider those things. So I don't know if anybody else is going to touch on those factors. Um, realignment, like I said, has consequences on our kids. Overbuilding has consequences on our kids. The movement of our kids from the schools that they've been in uh, since we moved here and the friends they've made has consequences. Our schools are more like a family. Um, I'm, having, I'm glad to be able to work for a company that um, sponsors invest in your child so I can double my my contribution every year and I'd like to, to continue to have my kids be able to have the ability to you know be able to, to use the resources that we've bought over the years so community continuity convenience and commute are my on my four C's and I'd like you to consider those items as you make your decision I thank you for your time thank you for being here tonight Speaker number seven is Kristen Sung. You may begin. Hi, my name is Kristen Sung and I'm a resident of Highland Creek. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address you in regards to the middle school rezoning. My son, along with 380 other students, will be negatively impacted by the blue and yellow options. We are a quarter of the 1,400 students being affected. I'm hoping the Community Green Plus option will be truly considered as it scored within six points of Cropper's score of 239. Six points. Our 25% is expected to bear an incredibly disproportionate burden to meet a utilization need. My child's commute will increase from 4.1 miles to 9.4 miles from my home, an over 18 mile a day commute for a 12 year old. And as a parent, I truly worry about all that idle time on a bus. That's 3,300 miles a year, which is about 260 hours on a bus or seven weeks of school per year on a bus. Their time and safety is not an expendable commodity to meet utilization. Cropper said last night, this was an average commute and this is a gross misrepresentation. We can do better. Our 25% are being expected to cross natural boundaries of I-85 along some of the busiest streets in our county with 40,000 other cars data that was compiled prior to COVID. We all know that what the roads are like around the mall in all of November and December, the weeks approaching Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, and race weekends. A traffic study done in December of 2020 during the literal peak of a pandemic is laughable and should be rendered totally invalid. Just like a bus tour done at the start of spring break when so many are out of town, out of work, or working from home is not reality but 3,300 miles is very real. We can do better. We know that HRMS needs immediate relief. None of us want our children attending school in trailers, just like none of us want our children traveling 10,000 miles over three years to get to school, crossing natural boundaries and breaking our feeder patterns. What benefit do our 25% get? We can do better and we have done better. We don't exclude 25% of students from realignment benefits in the community green plus option. No student crosses I-85. We align feeder patterns for the whole of the county. And our utilization for HRMS would be below 
a goal Cropper celebrated reaching for other schools in his plans just last night and a goal you commended him for reaching. We factor in future growth, a monumental variable in our county, and one that Cropper stated on his Q&A page was not considered with his plans. We are not expendable. We cannot trade 10,000 miles of my child's safety and time for a temporary utilization goal and transportation efficiency funding. Please consider the broader, longer term solution that the Community Green Plus Plan offers and do better for all of Cabarrus County. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Speaker number eight is Deanna Roach. You may begin. Uh, thank you, board, for allowing us to have this voice to speak before you today. Really appreciate that time. Uh, I'm a resident of the Highland Creek community. I've uh, been there since 2002, actually closed on my house days after Harris Road opened up. Um, I've seen lots of growth, as you can imagine, in that area. Uh, and I can always make an argument that tax dollars and voters deserve a voice, so please hear us because we've been there for 20 years. Uh, we built the schools, all three of them, but this is not just about the Highland Creek community. Um, I have three children. My eldest is a senior in college. My younger two are in middle school. And thankfully for me, I made the cutoff. So I'm not impacted. Okay, so why am I here? I'm here because I wanna speak on behalf of the 380 students that are impacted in my community. It is not enough for just my family to be okay, to be comfortable and to be safe. It is important to me that my entire community is considered at large. So that is why I'm here to speak on behalf of the 380 students that are in negatively impacted by the plans uh, yellow or blue. I implore you to reconsider the Green Plus plan. Uh, at worst case, please allow yourself to hear from the community leaders. Um, one thing I'd like to, you guys have heard from the experts in terms of all the metrics and the stats. Uh, and if we're thinking just numbers, then you guys already know how you're gonna vote. Uh, but I ask you to think people first and then numbers to consider our community. Consider the fact if your child was one of those 380 kids that were impacted, you'd go back and you'd rethink this and say we got to come up with something else. I am speaking on behalf of those families. Um, I grew up in New York City. I went to private school because where I grew up was very dangerous and that's what my family had to do in order to keep me safe and afford me a good quality education. I lost a parent in elementary school and my entire elementary class attended that funeral. That's the level of community that I grew up in. And I would like you to not just think numbers, but consider the community, consider the families that are closely knitted, closely connected, the children that are closely knitted and connected. And also, if you're not familiar with the development stages of adolescence, look up Eric Erickson's stages of development and you'll see and understand better the impact that this is going to have on the kids at this age group. These kids are trying to identify themselves. They're trying to build their self-esteem. And with the wrong moves, it creates negative impacts to them as adults. And so I implore you to seriously consider the Green Plus plan. If the criteria is important to you, then let the acceptance criteria represent all of the criteria, not just numbers. Consider the feeder plans. Consider the Ms. Rose, transportation. Ms. Rose, I'm going to have to cut you off. Your time's up, okay? Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you Thank you for much your for time. Being here. Speaker number nine, I'm going to ask that you state your name, please. Yeah. Hello, good evening. My name is Siva Shankari. And um, first off, I want to thank you uh, for taking the time out to read um, the letters that we sent to all of you, and also taking the time to do the bus tour last Friday to actually know how much time it takes to and from school. Thank you very much. Um, that's very reassuring and um, to know that our voices are heard. Uh, I'm here to um, 
state why we oppose what's on the table now. Um, we saw the recommendations that were put out by Cropper and IPT yesterday. Um, first, um, we expect smooth transition for our kids from elementary to middle and to high school because you know, they are going through changes themselves that we expect that, that, that's the least that we expect. Unfortunately, the plan on the table does not provide us with that. The, um, especially my son, who's in Cox Mill Elementary, is a normal public school. He would move from a elementary to an IB school and back to a normal public school, which is Cox Mill High. Um, we, we do not have any plans um, to put him in an IB program. We want him to do a normal public school. Um, this change of program, I'm, I'm sure there's an option to opt out, but still um, is a change of plan for us. And second, um, with respect to the travel time, um, I, did, I did understand that it took 50% it took of the students um, 21 minutes through the route and 95% up to 35 minutes to get to and fro from school is what um, we understand from yesterday's recommendation. Um, even the bus tour happened during spring break and COVID where all of us are working from home. So when we did the study ourselves, it's a minimum of 35 minutes by car. So every minute a child spends on a school bus, it takes away his time for extracurricular and other activities that we would like to concentrate on. And also, Cropper was given an opportunity to present, present it, its recommendations over one or two hours yesterday. Um, my request is to allow uh, the makers of the Green Plus plan who have put in countless hours of their time and energy in creating that plan. It gives us a clear feeder pattern, a smooth transition for our kids, and also it stresses on the fact that future utilization comes back to the same to Harris Road Middle as it is today, um, if we go with the current proposal by Cropper. So um, we would like an opportunity to, like what was given to Cropper yesterday, to present the Green Plus plan and compare and contrast with what's on the table and to address any questions that you may have. Like yesterday, you, you had questions, you asked them. We would like the same opportunity for us and make a decision that we will all be okay with. Thank, Thank you. you for being with us tonight. Thank you for the time. Thanks. Madam Chair, there's been a change. Um, maybe you've been alerted to it, but um, Mr. Delecki, number 11 speaker, will be speaking in place of number 10. Okay. So Mr. Delecki, you can start any time. Thank you. For the past four months, I've listened to each meeting and to say I'm beyond frustrated and extremely disappointed is an understatement. Based on your insipid responses and negative body language throughout this entire process, I struggle to identify which of you is less interested in understanding our plight. Furthermore, the seven of you as the process owners, how have you allowed the IPT to take reprehensible and egregious actions such as, one, allowing multiple plan submissions from Cropper that did not meet your criteria. Two, allowing Cropper to present plans to this community that you knew did not meet your criteria. And three, assuming this community would accept plans that did not meet your criteria. It wasn't until last week the IPT and Cropper finally decided to score the Green Plus plan. And at the 11th hour, that was absolutely intentional. Was the public alerted that one, this was happening, and two, that the information would be made public and when, and when it would be made public? What's the hidden agenda? How is this a mutually beneficial partnership with the community? An excerpt of your mission statement and governing principles references, and I quote, in dynamic partnership with our entire community. However, the optics of this ongoing debate, in addition to private meetings, condescending and dismissive responses, lack of transparency, and significant delays in the timing of disclosure, and in many cases what seems to be a lack of full disclosure, appears to be not a partnership with the community, but one with Crapper, thereby creating a perception of secrecy and deceit. This perception further exacerbates an overarching sentiment within the community that we're at the board's mercy. If that perception and sentiment were your intent and goal when you took your oath of office, congratulations, mission accomplished. I can assure you they weren't ours with our ballot submissions. During last night's meeting, Holly said, and I'm paraphrasing, when we vote to approve the plan next week, are we to assume that this board has already rendered a decision? If so, then why are we all here? 
The seven of you should be ashamed and embarrassed as to how you've chosen to manage this process and engage with this community. It's completely disingenuous. I have heard from teachers who are also parents, who are afraid to speak up as they've been told, and I quote, it's frowned upon to go against the board. How does this sentiment sit with you? Is that your style of leadership? That's not a democracy, that's a dictatorship. And how dare you put those people in a position where they have to choose between the security of their job versus what's best for their children? Realignment isn't about the seven of you, but rather the impact it has on the thousands of us and our children, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. I'm not asking for your consideration as that approach has clearly fallen on deaf ears. Today I'm here to tell you on record in no uncertain terms that regardless of agenda item or topic of discussion, we as a United County will hold each and every one of you accountable to ensure that the decisions made by this board best serve all based on undeniable facts presented. Not opinion, not third party influence or interference, not personal interest, not political or financial gain. In closing, you were elected to serve we the people, not I the board member. As elected officials, you represent us, and it's your sworn duty to do what's in our collective best interest without hesitation or reservation. In this particular case, that is to ratify the plan that best serves all, the Community Green Plus plan. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Our next speaker is Carlos Beckwiz. Did I say that correctly? It's Vasquez. Okay, you may start. It's close enough though. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for allowing me to come and speak to you. I'm very honored to be here and to express my concerns. Uh, my name's Carlos Vasquez. I'm a member of the community. I'm a father of two great kids. One attends Cox Mill High School. The other attends Cox Mill Elementary. I'm here as a concerned parent, as you probably figure that out. I'm concerned with the current realignment proposal that's being proposed and how it's going to impact my family personally and also how it's going to impact the hundreds of students in our community. With the current proposal, the biggest, I would say, challenge or concern that I have with it is around the transportation aspect which I know that there's been a lot of concerns raised by other parents. There's been a lot of, um, you heard about this issue. I read a lot of in the FAQs about it, but I'm here to tell you my personal issue with this. You see, my wife and I are both working parents. We both rely on the school bus to take our kids to and from school. For us, the school, our school day starts when my child gets on the bus and it finishes when he gets off the bus. With the current proposal, it's estimated that the commute time, it's going to triple. He's going to have to be there a lot earlier and his school day is going to end a lot later. Now, with that say, it is currently my son attends a, a private tutor, right? He needs the extra help with his academics. He needs the extra help with his uh, reading, with his math, okay? Um, g given the fact that his days are gonna be longer and he's gonna get home later, I don't know how feasible it's gonna be for my child to be able to attend his private tutor when he's already gonna be tired of attending like a nine, nine hour school day. If you count the transportation time period, that's longer than what most adults have to be at work for. So it's, I ask you is put yourself in my child situation, my family situation, and the impact that it's gonna have. This may impact his academics, his school, his grades. I, I don't see what this, Realignment is really buying us. I ask you to consider the green plan um, so that I don't know. I don't know why we're impacting if we have a viable option, but thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Thank today. you for being here tonight. Our next speaker is Hema Kanini. You may begin. Good evening. And thank you for the opportunity for speaking with the board today. 
Uh, after hearing the board meeting yesterday, uh, my understanding was Cropper had multiple opportunities one-on-one -on -one, to talk with PAC, IPT, and the uh, board members to propose their plan, whatever that plan's uh, color is, right? Uh, you know, in, st in spite of requesting multiple times to have the same opportunity for the community members to propose their plan, that never occurred. We did, of course, um, use other means to communicate, but that's not the same thing as being a one-on-one -on -one with, you know, with the needed people uh, to answer any questions, have that Q&A dialogue and conversation. Um, so um, if you, I, I don't, the after uh, pressure from the community, silently there was a scoring done against the Green Plus plan during the spring break and was put up on site. And we didn't know anything about it until after last night's meeting. And if, if any of you saw the scoring board between the Green Plus plan and the plan that Cropper mentioned for the IPT, Green Plus plan scores better if utilization is the immediate need to, for realignment. We score better, we are at six versus Cropper's proposal is at seven. Um, um, I want to also iterate the fact that Crop, Cropper's recommendation has no advantage to roughly 380 students. That's close to one fourth of the total people that are being realigned to Winkler Middle. Uh, Failing to satisfy even a single criteria for this one fourth of the students for, with the plan that Cropper proposed is a failure in itself. Um, and there's a, there's a the well thought out Green Plus plan by the members of the community who are solution based, who have done their research, and we have data to show it to you. If only you can give us a chance to propose that one on one and have question Q&A dialogue uh, with the members of the community and the PAC and the IPT and the board members. So when do we get that opportunity? We, have, we went through all means of communication from emails to letters, handwritten letters to putting stuff on pay, Facebook. So um, the Green Plus plan has at least one benefit for all the members, all the students impacted by this realignment. Whereas Cropper is negatively impacting the 380 students. They have no benefit whatsoever. Uh, I'm here to, and, and I really appreciate some of the board members who have reached out to us and, you know, have been reviewing the Green Plus plan and coming back with Q&A. We, we truly appreciate that. And it makes me happy that, you know, I've elected some officials, I've voted for officials that really care for and are looking for it. Um, so um, I, re I propose the, the, the people, the board, board and the PAC and, you know, other teams look at Green Plus plan, give us an opportunity to speak in person and, uh, you know, make a well-informed uh, decision. Thank, Thank you. you for being here tonight. Thank you. Could you please state your name for us? Uh, Durga Shankar. Okay, and you may begin now. Yeah. No. Good evening, all. Um, thank you for the opportunity tonight to speak in front of all of you. My name is Durga Shankar, and I'm here to represent the Edenton neighborhood and other families in the area who are impacted by the rezoning. As parents, my husband and I are active participants in our children's education, and we have experienced the current feed and planter in the place now. My question today to this uh, to the board is how can blue or yellow plan be acceptable when they provide zero benefit to 380 students that constitute 25% or more of the impacted population. And with that, I would like to highlight some of the advantages of the Green Plus plan that we have put together as a community. But Green Plus plan uh, balances utilization at all schools for all versus blue and yellow plan uh, smaller and immediate gains to HRMS utilization. Winkler utilization with this plan is not impacted. Improves and maintains uh, middle to high school feeder pattern for 900 plus students. Respects the established students and their families by transferring the burden of the growth to the newer developments. Overall, a more effective transportation option as no one needs to cross the I-85. 
Proximity to the school has enabled my son to be dropped off uh, for before school activities like Geography B and Chess Club, as well as after school sports activities. This has also enabled my husband and I to volunteer at the school for various um, clubs and balancing all our full-time jobs and be part of the overall development of our children. I would want to do the same for our other families in the community. Parents and taxpayers like me have spent a lot of time doing extensive research to come up with a Green Plus plan. Our families and children have been actively participating in communicating the impacts of the realignment and the advantage of the Green Plus plan to the board. The options under consideration was created by a third party in comparison to the Green Plus plan that has been created by parents and members of the community attending the current school system and the feeder pattern. As an alternative, while impacted families can definitely opt for other charter schools or other school options, I would like to once again advocate for and request the school board to consider and adopt the Green Plus plan. This whole process was based on a public input and I think with the way this has been, like public in input hasn't been there, there's been lack of transparency and uh, I think the public input is the Green Plus plan. And uh, thank, thank you, you for, for being here tonight. tonight. Thank you. Our next speaker is Melissa White. Good evening. Good evening. You may begin. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My friends and neighbors have shared in-depth data with this board, but I'm here to speak to the real life repercussions this rezoning will have on my family. I'm a full-time working mom of a current sixth and current third grader. This rezoning will absolutely affect our family. First, middle schoolers will lose too much valuable time. My current middle schooler gets on the bus at 8.30 a.m and gets off the bus at 4.40 p.m. This rezoning to Winkler will drastically increase her time on the bus. With traffic and the increased distance, I don't anticipate her getting off the bus until after 5 p.m. She will lose time for homework, participating in extracurricular activities and playing sports, as well as important family time and any time to rest. There won't be time for her to do much else other than school and bus and homework. This will not promote any sort of balance for our middle schoolers. This will not support well-rounded involvement in different interests and activities. This will not promote family time. I understand that I have the option to pick up my middle schooler in the car rider line. This is not a feasible option for me because as stated, I work full-time outside the home and depend on bus transportation to and from school. Truthfully, I'm confused as to why my children and community must make this sacrifice and move when there are more reasonable options such as the Green Plus plan available. The other plans would change the feeder pattern. Winkler Middle would feed into three different high schools. In addition, those plans would double the distance and triple the commute time for 380 students. These changes violate the realignment criteria in and of themselves. And what about the new neighborhoods being built? Why can't they be established as part of a new feeder pattern for Winkler in an effort to combat overutilization and future growth issues? I understand these aren't easy questions and there aren't easy solutions. Your task is to try to find the best option possible, the one that has the least harmful effect on the least number of students and families. The IPT plan isn't the answer. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight and share my honest and heartfelt concern. I implore you to please take another look at these options and find a solution that will work for our students and families. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Madam Chair, this is Mr. Call. Um, Number 10 on your original list. That is, that is fine. Thank you. I 
I will just ask you to speak your name, please. Sure. My name is Amit Kaul. You may begin. Great. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to address the board. My name is Amit Kaul, and I live in Christian Berry. I appreciate the fact that a board member asked proper GIS to score the Green Plus plan, which is out here. And I appreciate the fact that proper GIS has scored it, and the score has been published on the realignment website alongside the final recommendation score. So this is from the website. I mean, this is what was actually published. Um, I have only one point that I would like the board to consider, and that is that the score difference between the Green Plus plan and the final recommendation is only six points. Uh, 245 and 239. Uh, let me repeat that. Six points. Five of those points are because the Green Plus plan does not have the diversity that the final recommendation does. So that's out here. You can see the five. So, in effect, there is only a one point difference between the two plans apart from diversity. One point. I am a data driven person, and I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today if the difference had been over 20 points, but a six point difference causes me to be out here in front of you. The reason that the Green Plus plan loses five points on diversity is because the people that bought houses in Christianberry and Highland Creek want to send their kids to Harris Road Middle. You have heard parents come by in earlier sessions stating quite clearly that they bought their house to send their kids to Cox Mill Elementary School, Harris Road Middle, and then to Cox Mill High. I believe in two years, the diversity score of the final recommendation will go up by five points because people will continue to buy houses that are zoned for the new Harris Road middle. Now, of course, in the presentation yesterday, Cropper GIS goes on to say that there are other benefits of the final recommendation which the Green Plus plan does not have. So then, why is the current final recommendation causing more and more community members to come out and speak against it at each subsequent meeting? Why are community members and their kids sending emails and letters to the board about the Green Plus plan? Let me finish with a teaching analogy. What would you do if a teacher asked you for your input and then rejected your solution because it was in essence one point away from the final solution that the teacher came up with? What would you do if the teacher continued to push their solution instead of working with you to see the, how your solution would fit the unmentioned other unmentioned criteria. Would you still trust that teacher and go to that public school? Or would you instead look at other teachers in a private or a charter school? Thank you. And I'd like to leave you with a request to consider the Green Plus plan instead of the final recommendation, as there is only a one point difference between the two apart from diversity. It's within the same ballpark and has the support of the community. Thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Would you state your name, please? Sure. My name is Rohit Walia. You can hear me well? Y yes, and you may begin. All right. Um, uh, my name is Rohit Walia. Uh, I'm father of two children uh, who will be impacted by uh, the CCS realignment. I would like to first of all thank uh, the board for giving this opportunity uh, to provide feedback and share our concerns and views on this uh, upcoming realignment uh, here. Uh, I'm here today to convey my support uh, for uh, the Green Plus plan, which was brought to the table uh, before this esteemed board after a thorough, uh, meticulous process with an open mindset. Uh, this plan uh, provides practical pathways to minimize student impact for every impacted community on all realignment criteria. Let me be clear. This plan is not about a particular community, neighborhood, but rather a holistic solution that has benefits for all impacted stakeholders. Uh, under the IPT plan, uh, the CCS realignment criteria will be violated for about 380 students who would be moved to H. Winkler Middle School, 
uh, that is a staggering 25% uh, of the total impacted students. Uh, their distance has doubled to eight miles. Commute time tripled to almost an hour. Middle to high school feeder pattern is broken as well. Uh, worst of all, uh, there is zero benefit for them. Uh, my question today is uh, to you all, uh, how can IPT plan be accepted when it violates uh, the realignment criteria for 25% of the impacted students, especially when there is a much better option available before the board? Uh, even though, as was stated yesterday, uh, this process started in September last year, uh, the pandemic year, uh, the public came to know about it uh, only in December. Uh, so within a short span of two months, two revised plans uh, were provided for your review. It was finally scored after public request. And uh, not surprisingly, uh, it came back with flying colors, a uh, variance of uh, mere five points, uh, uh, that too relying solely on demographics. Uh, I saw the scorecard yesterday as well. Uh, so. This plan, I will repeat, is a better option for entire county as it has uh, benefits for all and it uh, adheres to the rezoning criteria as evident by the scorecard. Uh, I think it has not been explained and reviewed properly with the board. Um, at this point, I would use the analogy of uh, service providers in today's world. As we all know, that uh, no service provider eliminates or cuts back on uh, services of existing customers to accommodate for the prospective leads. Uh, by going ahead with the IPT plan uh, without cautiously weighing in, uh, the Green Plus plan, uh, essentially the message uh, that would be sent is that 25% of the impacted community taxpayers um, who have supported CCS over the years in county for services are now being asked to uh, make way for future growth with uh, absolutely no consideration for them at all. Uh, I urge and request uh, the board to carefully review the Green Plus plan. Uh, let's work together to arrive at a solution. Uh, we want the best for all of our children uh, since we are invested in the community and the county. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. I'm going to ask you to state your name, please. Uh, Lindsay Riley. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would just wanted to thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to come again. I know you guys have heard a lot, you know, a lot from us, um, but it's a very important cause, and we're not going to give up. Um, basically, we're just asking to for you guys to come up with a solution that's going to work for everyone. Um, Ms. Grimsley, I truly hope that you misspoke last night when you said that the board was going to be approving this plan before hearing from us. And um, I come here tonight as a voter and a very concerned parent. Um, a lot of us in this area and our little part of this county are not feeling represented. The poor planning and overbuilding has caused many issues. And the most frustrating part of all of it is not one person has said enough and they're not looking out for us or our kids. No one is taking responsibility, not zoning, not the school board, not the city council, no one. And they literally had a zoning meeting last Thursday over spring break about annexing more land on Cox Mill Road for more homes. What a slap in the face. I have written to everyone and not received one response. The lack of transparency throughout this process, especially during the pandemic, is most concerning. We were denied access to the public advisory committee meetings, which was not the case in the previous elementary realignment as I personally attended those meetings myself. Um, and then, you know, one thing that I did see last night was that the plan option 1A, which was very similar to ours that Cropper had mentioned, was shot down by the public advisory committee in the earlier stages. But I wonder if it could have been different had we had representation on that board. I know somebody north of 73 actually was on that public advisory committee. 
the person that is near our neighborhood lived in Winding Walk and they're not affected. So nobody in our you know, area was directly affected by any of that. So that's just something to think about. Um, and then finally, I just want to give a shout out to Mr. Walter. I really feel like he's done his due diligence and making it known last night that Cropper's recommendation was not given or communicated to the public prior to last night unless you consider hiding information over spring break in a difficult website communication. Um, I'm also very grateful that he asked about the Green Plus plan and that if they had scored it. And I'm hoping that you guys have seen from the, the board here that that's their scoring. And we're very happy with how it scored, actually. It must be pretty humiliating for Mr. Cropper that a group of parents could come together and make a plan um, after he boasted about all of his credentials last night. And uh, it looks better than his. Uh, One-way communication and getting our feedback and doing absolutely nothing is unacceptable. And they're refusing to answer the hard questions from our community. So tonight is your chance to really listen to us and do what is right for everyone. I know some people are angry and it's been a terrible year for all of us and I'm asking you to do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you guys. Could you please state your name? Yep. <clears throat> Good evening, board. My name is Samir Arora. You may start. Okay. Uh, first of all, board, I want to really appreciate you hearing, out, uh, hearing us out so far. It is because of your support that the Green Plus uh, plan was considered. Also, it was only because of your support that we even got to know that the Green Plus plan was scored. Because if you hadn't asked for the Green Plus plan score yesterday, we would not have even known. It was placed on the Realignment website under Q&A section somewhere last week when we were out on the spring break. So thank you, Mr. Walter, for asking about the Green Plus plan score. Also, I'd like to appreciate you acknowledging all the heartfelt letters that the children from our community wrote to each one of you, uh, because this topic is very near and dear to the heart and to the families that are impacted. So really appreciate you acknowledging the letters. Now, you were presented the IPT recommendation last night, and you'll be making a very important decision in a few days. So what I'm here to do is really point out a few facts that may not have been very evident from the presentation yesterday. So number one, under the IPT recommendation, 380 students from the Cox Mill and Highland Creek area, that make up 25%, one-fourth the population, the overall impacted population, uh, rezoned from, Winkler, uh, from Harris Road to Winkler. Right, so that's 25% a, that's a of population for whom the realignment, realignment criteria laid down by you is basically going to be uh, violated, right? Their distance is gonna be doubled to eight miles, commute time tripled to nearly an hour, middle school to high school feeder pattern violated. Uh, and uh, all of this, why do we have to accept? Why do we have to settle for a plan that, that has zero positives for one fourth of the population? And do you ever question why the Green Plus scores were not reviewed with you yesterday? Why was it even brought up? Why wasn't it even brought up at the very first place? Why was it only brought up when you asked, right? So on the contrary, Green Plus plan, thanks to you, it was scored, and it scored phenomen phenomenally well. It scored 245 points, which is only six points apart from the IPT plan. And please note five of which was related to diversity criteria, right? Green Plus Plan balances the middle school to high school feeder pattern, natural boundaries, proximity to all, proximity for all. It has a benefit for all in it. It adheres to the rezoning criteria, right, laid down by, by the board, right? It is a balanced solution benefiting all. So my, my ask is very simple tonight, right? I appeal to the board to give Green Plus Plan a due consideration that it has been deserving from the very beginning, right? It has, been it has been drafted by community. It has been drafted by the community with zero experience only because of the passion that we hold in our hearts. Not, for, not just for us, but for others, for the entire community. We, have, we, we are just engaged parents who are very passionate about this, right? So my ask, my, I urge you to consider a public vote of Green Plus Plan versus the, versus the IPD, plan, IPD plan. So can you, so you can make this final decision based on public input. I know that I will sleep better tonight knowing that I have put my best efforts towards the overall well-being 
of the children of my community that I represent. Sir, and I I'm really hope so that you, you will do the your same. Your time's up, okay? Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you very for much. being here tonight. Becky Wilson. Hello, yes. Okay, you may begin. All right, so my name is Becky Wilson. I am from the Allen Mills community. First of all, I just wanna let you know that I appreciate your time and effort. I went through this process with Mr. Cropper two years ago. I went to every meeting. I understand how much time, how much consideration goes in to this whole redistricting process. It is not easy. I also understand that Harris Road is way overcrowded. Um, it needs decompressed, but I do feel strongly that the recommended, that Mr. Cropper's recommended plan does not best meet the realignment criteria. So I'm asking that before you make your decision next week, that you look closely at the Green Plus plan. So I have a couple major concerns with it. Um, first of all, um, distance. I mean, currently we live four miles away from Harris Road Middle School eight miles away from Winkler. Eight miles doesn't seem that far, but honestly, when you're adding multiple bus stops and then you're adding traffic coming on and off I-85, it's not only a safety concern, but it's gonna double our commute from 15 to 20 minutes to a 40 to 45 minute commute. This is gonna put my kids getting home after around close to five o'clock. Um, leaves little time for after school extracurricular activities and, and homework. Um, secondly, feeder pattern. Um, I mean, the recommended plan will be relocating approximately 25% of the Cox Mill Elementary School students to Winkler for middle school, separating them from their friends that they've made for the past six years while in elementary. Then they will make new friends at Winkler, only to be displaced from these friends three years later to go back to their Cox Mill Elementary School friends community. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of relocating for teenagers during a developmental time when friendship stability is just so important. The Green Plus Plan relocates these students north of 73 from Odell to go to Northwest Middle School with their peers that will then all carry on to Northwest High School. By the same token, it moves students south of 85 to Winkler and then again, they all carry on to Cabarrus, West Cabarrus. This plan just makes more sense to me. Lastly, um, we'll be moving our kids from a non-IB elementary school to an IB middle school, then back to a non-IB high school. You know, I'm concerned that coming from Cox Mill Elementary, the kids will get lost as they've had no previous exposure to the IB style of education. If we do decide to opt out of the IB program, I'm also concerned that our kids from Cox Mill Elementary are are not gonna be able to fully integrate into Winkler and maybe socially isolated from the kids in the IB program at Winkler. Um, you know, the Green Plus plan scored only six points higher than Cropper's recommended plan and five of those points were based on um, demographics. The Green Plus plan I feel like is a really viable option and I ask you to please consider the Green Plus plan when making the decision next week. I also, lastly, this is our second round of redistricting since moving to Allen Mills two and a half years ago. Um, continuing to redistrict our kids is not not an option. Cabarrus County continues to grow, especially in the southwestern Cabarrus County, and the Cabarrus County schools need to grow with it. Um, that's it. I made it under three minutes. I thank you very much. Great thank time. you for being with us tonight. Yep. Madam Chair, we're out of order a little bit. We've got Miss Parrish currently. I figured that out. <laughs> thank you. Catherine Parrish. Is that because you remember me from being here so many times? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you again for having me. You may begin. I watched last night as Mr. Cropper and the IPT congratulated themselves for moving 1,441 middle school students, 980 going to the new school and 550 just caught up in the shuffle. I know for certain that 380 of those students are being treated as collateral damage. Not only do they receive no benefits out of this realignment, but they are proactively having four realignment criteria broken creating multiple negative impacts for these students. The IPT has selectively chosen the information they want you to see, ignoring this unfortunate consequence because they have rationalized to themselves that to make life better for a select group of students means another group has to suffer. The self-congratulations continued with a pat on the back about how transparent this process has been. In reality, the process could not have been more opaque. The majority of the information available on the realignment website for meetings dating back to September wasn't even posted until early March. The Q&A that the IPT is so proud of facilitating during the last public information session addressed just five questions live. Then it took six weeks for the remaining questions to be answered. And that happened only after I sent an email asking where to find that Q&A. 
We jumped through the hoops that were set up for us, filled out forms and surveys. In fact, 783 from our neighborhoods filled out the last survey, most rejecting both blue and yellow options. The IPT response to such a turnout was the dismissive comment that we were expected to be vocal. Does that sound to you like feedback that was carefully considered? We are being so vocal because we don't agree with the theory that someone in this process has to go home unhappy. What if every student could receive a benefit from the new middle school opening? That's exactly what our solution proposes, that every single one of the 1,582 students affected by our plan are all impacted positively in some way versus the 26% of a slightly smaller number of middle school students in the current proposal that are being told to make huge sacrifices for the good of the whole school district. The plan may not be perfect, but it stacks up toe to toe with the IPT recommendation by their own scoring metrics something we just discovered last night after it was stealthily added to the realignment website last week. Does the plan provide immediate relief to Harris Road? Yes. Longer term, the growth in the western part of our county needs to be addressed by a more comprehensive plan than displacing students from their home school to make room for future ones. Will it take more work, more time, more money to figure that out? Probably, but that's your job. You all asked to be here, sitting in those chairs, tasked with making the hard decisions. You campaigned to represent the current students of Cabarrus County and to make the best decision for them, not developers or the future families that will inhabit those properties. It's not too late to turn this process around and to stop treating this as a zero sum game. There is more than enough proof to show that other equitable options exist that can make this realignment something that absolutely every Cabarrus County student has a reason to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm going to try this. Augusta Roy? Augusta. Thank you. You may begin. Hello, my name is Augusta Roy, and I am 11 years old, and I have been living in the Christianberry neighborhood since my birth in 2010. I have made friends in this neighborhood, and we all went to school together. I am very excited that I will be starting my sixth grade at Harris Road Middle School with my friends from Christianberry. Highland Creek Winding Walk after more than one whole year of online schooling due to COVID-19. But now I am being told that I will start at Harris Road Middle School and then have to leave my friends again the following school year and have to go to a different school, which is Winkler Middle School. Why are you doing that to us? Why do I have to switch middle school twice? It doesn't make any sense to me. I treasure my friends and our friendship the most, but this plan of the school rezoning will impact us badly. What are we getting out of this? The, the rezoning is going to impact us academically, emotionally, and physically, and above all will make us apart from each other, which I believe is unjustified and unreasonable. Please don't do that to us. We kindly request you to approve the Green Plus plan and keep together, keep us together in this community. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here tonight. Would you state your name for us? Agnea. You may begin. My name is Agnea Roy and I live in the Christian Berry neighborhood. I have been living there since I was born in 2011. Today I am here to support the Green Plus plan and also to request you to approve the plan. Please do not break the community and split our friendship as it's going to be heartbreaking for all of us and very difficult emotionally. We are already frustrated with COVID-19, so please do not put additional stress by putting us go through this rezoning problem. This change will impact us academically, emotionally, and also from a time management perspective. Please keep us in the Harris Road Middle School so that I stay within my community and with my friends and brother. There might be benefits of rezoning to others and the management, but there is nothing beneficial for us and nobody seems to be concerned about our viewpoint. 
I'm really concerned about the bus time and most importantly, the school rating, which is going to potentially impact my high school and college preparedness. So I sincerely request everyone here to approve the Green Plus plan proposed by my community and keep us together. Please keep us in Harris Road Middle School. Thank you for listening to our kind request and we do appreciate for your consideration and approval of the Green Plus plan. Thank you so much. God bless everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. This way. <laughs> Good evening. Would you like to state your name for us, please? Mm -hmm. My name is Gata Carora. Okay, you may begin. Okay. My, hi, my name is Gata Carora. I am a fourth grader at Cox Mill Elementary. I will be impacted in the first year of my middle school. I do not want to go to Winkler because it will be, it will be farther. That means I will have to wake up earlier. I will also have to be on the bus longer. I could be using that time for sports. My social connection will be ruined because my friends in Winding Walk will be going to HRMS, so I will not be able to see them until I go to high school. And my friends that I make in Winkler will go to West Cabarrus High School, so I'll never be able to see them. Again, please consider the Green Plus plan because it is the best plan for everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. Okay, board members, I think Karina, is that the last? Okay, that's the last of the speakers. So I'm just going to take a few minutes for us to uh, have a little bit of discussion before we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out the public here and then we can have a little bit of discussion. So, um, yes, absolutely, Ms. Carpenter, okay. go ahead. Uh, Ms. Uh, Chairman, um, I would like to get uh, asked to have uh, these names where well what it was we had letters sent to us or I did and well I think all of us did mm -hmm. and I had a total and I did read every one of them I had a total of 121 letters that I read and I would like to request uh, that this list of the name of each individual be added to our minutes uh, and I would like to request these be added to our minutes. This okay. has the name and if they gave the address and everything, but have this added to our minutes, please. Okay, I'm sure our board clerk can take care of that, no problem. You get it? Okay, no, that's fine, that's fine. So, board members, I'm gonna go ahead and ask that we take a motion to close the public hearing and then we can have a little bit of discussion. May I have a motion that the public mm -hmm. hearing on student realignment be closed to public input? Ms. Sandage, may I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Blackwell. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. So just, it, I want to make sure that all of you have an opportunity to either make a comment or ask a question. And the first thing I want to make sure that we are very clear on is because I got a couple of phone calls today from some parents, actually a couple of those that were here tonight. The statement that was made last night is that the plan, a realignment plan, is on our agenda for next Monday night for approval. It doesn't mean that what we've been presented will be what is approved. We can make changes. The board is, can do anything that they want to do. But we do have it on the agenda to make a decision if that's what you choose to do. So the context and the verbiage, I think, is a little bit out of line, and I just want to make sure that that's clear. I, as board chair, do have to state what's on the agenda for next week, but not that this plan that was presented last night has to be the plan that is approved. So with that being said, I will start with Ms. Blackwell. Comments or questions? Um, I just want to say how much I appreciate the community uh, stepping up and, and just being such a big part of this uh, realignment. Um, I'm very impressed with the, the letters that we've received um, from all of the communication that we've received. We've all um, gotten the letters and um, have read those letters as well. And it's just, um, it, it's really nice to see so much uh, community involvement um, with this process. Um, and, you know, 
I, I hope that everyone understands that we are taking all of those things into account as we make this decision. Um, we don't make this decision lightly at all. Um, and so I just, I hope everybody knows that we are doing that. So any requests for any additional information tonight before we have our next discussion on the business, at the business meeting? Not at this time. Okay, Mr. Walter. Uh, I think we should give it a little more time before we actually vote on on the plan. I mean, there's a lot of information that was presented tonight. Um, this scoring thing apparently was just seen by this uh, group yesterday. That doesn't give everybody a whole lot of time to at least look into it. Um, so I think we probably need a little bit more time to review those differences. If they have those differences, let our consultant uh, give us some more information about why those were scored certain ways. So is there any additional information or anything that you request at this point in time or just extra I mean, specifically time? Specifically, to... break it down. Why, why are they saying that they're the same minus the demographics? Why is that? Is that, you know, I don't, I don't know. You have, a, you have a group that has a perce perception and gives us this feedback that may or may not be completely accurate if it doesn't meet all the criteria. I don't know that specifically. From what I've been presented, what I've read, it seems to, for the majority of people do, but you know, I don't, the numbers that were presented today are new, new to me, so um, I just think a little more time to look it over would be Okay, so if you are requesting additional time, what do you feel before the board meeting on Monday or? I'd like and to see we it, I'd like to see it pushed, pushed to me. Okay, so we can actually deal with that on Monday. It, it will be on the agenda, but we can discuss whether we want to have a delay in time. If there's anything that you want specifically, how about just let's go ahead and just email those I'd questions. I'd be happy to, happy to do that. Too. Perfect. Great. All right, Ms. Sandage. So I'd like to correct a few things if I can. Um, I think everybody on, not I think, I know everybody on this board has been very tuned to what's been going on with the Green Plus plan. That's why our dates have changed. That's why we've answered so many questions. That's why we have this comparison chart. Um, I'd also like to correct, um, I did send the question in for the comparison chart last week, I think it was. And that's when I received the question on my campaign page. And I, was, I received that comparison chart probably a few days later. And I answered those questions on my campaign page. And I gave you guys where you can find that comparison chart. So I'd like to correct that. I do also agree with Mr. Walter in giving this some additional time, even though I think we pushed it out a month already. Um, maybe even longer than that. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, board members have been very available in this process. We have opened our ears. I've opened my personal pages, my social media, my phone, my personal uh, time to commit to the Green Plus plan. And it's the reason why the Green Plus plan, plan has even been considered. I appreciate the residents for acknowledging that. One of the things that, um, well, two things that stood out to me and I wrote them down was one, that we have teachers in a community or educators in a community that are scared to speak out and we've had several teachers in the last few months come in this room and speak to us publicly about their concerns. So I'd, I'd, I'd want to, to know, those teachers to know that your peers have spoke out to this board about their concerns and you should feel, feel, also feel comfortable in being able to do that. The other uh, point that I wrote down was, um, when was, when was this comparison chart updated? So when, when it was updated, we need to identify the timeline for that. So it was re requested, and I just spoke about this earlier. The comparison was requested when, and then the comparison was completed when, and then the comparison was provided to the public when. We need to identify those dates so that we can put that on paper. Another thing that I want us to really uh, clarify, and I know we have a timeline on the redistricting uh, page, but we've heard a lot today and a lot in this process about the public not being informed about what we're doing and how we are doing that. And I know, Brian, I've asked specifically to, for you to break that down for us, and you did, and I put that on my campaign page as well so that folks know how we've made this information available to the public. But again, there must be some breakdown in communication because the things that we're hearing now, we've answered those things in some way, shape, or form, whether that be me posting them publicly or them being on the frequently asked um, questions uh, page on our redistricting. So 
I agree again with Mr. Walter in giving us a little bit more time to answer specific questions. And I also um, agree with, um, oh good gracious, Mr. what Mr. Walter said about just clarifying some of these things that are still um, concerning. The last thing I'll say is thank you to those young students who spoke about, spoke about how they feel in this process. I really would like to see more of that. Uh, so thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. Ms. Carpenter. Um, well, I agree 100% with Mr. Walters and Keisha. Uh, I would like to see some more time, especially since I seen this, um, um, alignment uh well the 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 scoring being so close and if the green plus plan could be tweaked just a little bit more and the score where they had the demographics uh where that score was so close uh maybe tweaked a little plus a little more and get a green plus plus plan uh and make it be even better i would be uh, in you know, I would say go for it uh, because I still have some uh, concerns, and people know that I pretty much say it like it is. Um, I had concerns on our bus trip when we took that. Um, I had concerns when I saw the traffic patterns, um, and I have some 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 real concerns. Uh, and I just, I, I don't like to see uh, some of the turns we made, and I, I really have some real concerns with that. And I don't like, and it was, the comments were made tonight a couple times where people say, I, I have concerns when you're taking me from a non-traditional school, putting me in the IB program, and then taking me back to, Cox Mill that's not an IB program and that was mentioned numerous times and and people tried to assure me oh that's not going to be a problem but these parents are saying they're concerned about that and then another thing that I've, I've thought about over and over where we're taking the program the Mandarin program we're moving it to the new middle school that Mandarin program has been over in that Cox Mill area. The children have been in there. We did the realignment just, you know, a couple years ago. A lot of those parents had to transport their children to Harris Road or two different places, and now we're moving that program again, and I'm concerned about that. After those, a lot of those parents had to transport those children to another location and now we're moving it again and uh that that concerns me and we're doing all this this shuffling around and now we're going to do some more of that that concerns me and and you and someone made the comment that we're using these maybe these 380 students as collateral I don't want to use anybody as collateral and uh so I think we ought to take you know maybe a little time step back and make sure we do this right we're talking we're not talking numbers we're talking students we're talking about individuals that's who we're supposed to be concerned about so if it takes a little bit more time to make sure we get it right i want to make sure we get it right and if it takes us a little bit more time to make sure we do it and if it's adjusting either the you know whatever plan we decide and again i was uh really when i saw those numbers being as close as they are uh, i want to make sure that uh, we are getting it right and you know our criteria i heard more and more that uh it was one out of the five criteria we had and i we keep saying well, it's 97%, 97%, it's that, that was the big thing that we looked at, that criteria. Um, but, uh, you know, I know that's a large number, but let's look at the whole picture, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. So I want to make sure we do, and if it's taking a little bit more time, 
And if it's going a green plus plus plan, then let's do it. But let's make sure we are keeping ourselves open and, and, and looking at the whole picture. And again, I want to thank everybody and especially the parents and the children and everybody for, for bringing this to our attention and making sure that we're taking everything into consideration. Thank you. Mr. Farr? Well, you know, this uh, whole topic, you know, brings, brings up so many emotions. It brings up so many uh, things of the past that we've, we've set through here as a board, or, or some of us have. Uh, and I, I know where these parents have been. I've been on the other side of the redistricting. I have been, re my kids have been redistricted. I've, I've came to this meeting, oh, about 2000 and maybe seven, 2006, and, and did the same thing they're doing right now. And, and honestly, that's when I decided to, to run for school board because I thought we were getting shafted. And I know they feel the same way. Maybe we'll get some good school board candidates out of this. But, uh, you know, we build, a new school, we build a new middle school, we have to put students in it. And along with that, we have to relieve the overcrowding at, uh, was it Harris Road? It's at 117, whatever it is. And that, their plan, I think, takes it to 97, but then, which is key to me, but then when you look at how close they are, you know, on the point system, then is that number really, I mean, is that, what does that mean? So, but the thing that really bothered me and, and then I guess we should have known about it, or maybe I should have known about it. Uh, they didn't have a representative on the committee. And to, and to me, if, you know, every neighborhood or part of the county that gets redistricted ought to have some representation on it. So I, I don't know what happened, don't know, maybe nobody, but I, I don't really know how that came about. But uh, that part of it I didn't necessarily like. I've never, you know, I've been a, a opponent of, uh, I've never liked paying someone to, to do our redistricting. I've always thought it's something that we should do internally. Uh, but I kind of uh, agree with some of the rest of them. I think we need to, to, to spend a little more time, if, if it's another week or whatever it is. But uh, this is very, very important. You know, like, like we've said before, this is really the most important thing we ever do as a board. But unfortunately for our county, being uh, you know so popular or, or desirable place to, to live and to go to school, we, we have to do this way too much, and and that's that's a concern. So uh, I think the, I think the consensus is probably that we need to take a little more time to you know that you don't you can't always get it right, but you know you can do what's right, and sometimes that's 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 the way I've always approached my decisions. I want to do what's right, so. That's all I got for right now. Ms. Adcock? Uh, yes, so there was a lot of information that I feel like the parents really um, gave us tonight that we'd not heard before. The one that to me sticks out is that they had 1,500 signatures. So we have you know, 380 children, but then we have 1,500 people that are um, kind of like the iceberg. You see the tip of the iceberg, but the real problem is underneath the water um, so I agree with what everybody else has said I do feel that you know we owe it to our community to continue to take some time because we do have the ability to do that at this point and see if there are other concessions we can make to help to prevent you know these families and their children from being displaced I think that's our job as a board and it actually is so with that being said what i really need is for number one the realignment is on for action agenda next monday night so at that point in time we can um you know just vote to table it okay and if that's what you would like to do we can do that i need for you to email questions or any type of request for uh, information what, after you've had time to think about this tonight, um, we need a, a time frame here because the agenda does get has to get uh, advertised to the general public. So I think what we need to do is just go ahead and leave it on the agenda 
and then table it that night if you still feel the need to do that. Or during that, that time between now and over the weekend, as we usually do, get your email questions to us, um, any requests for information that you need, uh, and just whatever, whatever, whatever you guys need. The most important part of this is we need to have um, Mr. Schultz to give us a time frame on decision making because the problem is is we do have to get a decision out for bus drivers and transportation and and all those things that take place and to give parents notice you know that gives them enough time you know the school system needs to know as well so there's a lot of information that has to be prepared for and I know the parents get that because they spoke to it and they did a really good job you're you know you're right they did a an awesome job in what they've done. Um, we do need to acknowledge the kids that came. I thought that was great. It's always good to hear from them. It's such an emotional piece of it. I too was one and told a parent today in 1991 I stood before the school board and told them what I thought when my five-year-old was getting ready to start kindergarten and was being he was a fifth generation that would have attended Mount Pleasant Elementary School and he was being bused to Coltrane and Webb elementary downtown and I could not even fathom why that was going to take place from where we lived but um, it did take place and it did happen and of course he had you know good years at Coltrane Webb went back to Mount Pleasant Middle School uh, during his sixth grade he was the only child that went back to Mount Pleasant Middle School and started all over so I get it it is a huge highly emotional time so I appreciate them coming in and being engaged in their students and their their kids um, education as well but we've got to make a decision at some point in time. Give me just a minute. We've got to make a decision. We have. We are opening a new middle school. You know, we need to do it right. We want to make sure we can do things the, as best we can to service everyone. But I would also like to know if we're going to table that. Um, you know, the point was made, and when we got it, we knew that that was a last-minute decision. Is there anybody else that would like to take a tour during during school now that, that it is back in session? Because we really do need to decide that one pretty quickly. That takes a little bit to put together. Anybody else? I mean, I'm working during the day, so I can't do that. Right. I knew you couldn't, Rob. Laura? I mean, yeah, I would definitely like to. Um, I'll just have to try and figure out how to navigate that with my schedule. Okay. Keisha? Do I need to take another tour? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can. Okay. Yeah, but I don't have to. Would you like to? Uh, we, because we have to do it a different way according to how many board members go. Yeah, if there's a way to add stops, because I heard that today, mm -hmm. um, to add what stops we would be looking at. I don't know if that's possible. Brian, you maybe can add, answer that. And what I was going to say earlier is I'd like to hear um, if Brian has anything to say about our comments or about anything relating to this redistricting. Well, I was definitely going to give him a time, but I want us to get our points in first. So okay. I know what I'm supposed to do tonight. G gotcha. Okay. And then the other thing was like, I was talking to another board member last night, and this just holds true, and it made a lot of sense to me. Um, that board member said, you know, change is evident. We have to start preparing our kids for changes to come. I know that that doesn't sound genuine, but that's the truth. At the end of the day, it, COVID happened. We had to change life around because of COVID. And if we teach our kids to look at things in a different lens, they will absolutely do that. So if we make this very negative for our kids, it's going to be negative for them. But if we show them that this can be a positive, and I'm gonna call you out, because Laura said this last night, and it made sense to me, we've gotta be that role model for our children. And yeah, this looks bad right now, but it doesn't we don't have to make it bad. So I want us to think about that as a board as well. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Thank you for those comments. Ms. Carpenter? Yes, and, and it was offered a couple times, and this may be something we need to ask, but let Brian answer too, but the invitation was offered a couple times, and I don't know if the board wants to accept this, but it was offered for them to formally give us a presentation of the Green Plus plan formally, and, and I'm all open to accept that from them. Uh, you know, from one of their representatives for us to see that as a formal presentation uh, for us to get that because Cropper did not come up with that plan. So 
I would be more than happy to look at that, and they may want to tweak it a little bit more, but I would be more than, so we can kind of look at that. So I'm willing to, to look at that so we could see that, so we can kind of compare apples to apples. So okay. I'm willing to look. Okay, Ms. Blackwell. So that was actually the, the statement that I was going to make a few minutes ago, was that um, is it possible for us to set up something where we could have um, that open dialogue that they uh, would like to have with with Cropper, with us. Um, they could set up their boards um, and, and we could have an open discussion regarding their plan versus what now we have as the, the blue plan. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and let Mr. Furr continue with his comments. If the, do you, would you like to be part of another bus tour? No. Okay, D Ms. Adcock. Uh Only if it is different if it's the same as what we already have done then i wouldn't need to do that again okay all right so i'm really hearing so would you want like to do that okay all right and then so brian i'll let you discuss i mean i guess if the board's pleasure is to have a, pr a presenter from the green plus uh, group maybe monday night to come i'm i'm We've never done that before, so I guess we're, this is new territory here, and we probably you need the board attorney to weigh in on that as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah thank you uh, for giving me a chance to speak. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I, I too appreciate so much hearing back from the community. I mean, uh, and I'll say that the, the students at the end uh, did a great job. They're going to be uh, amazing adults mm -hmm. uh, one day and great public speakers, and we'll contribute greatly to our community. So it's, it's great to see that, and it really warms my heart to see students engaging uh, with that so early. So uh, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here to serve what the board needs uh, in terms of requests. So I just, I just need the information that you need to help make things really clear for you. Um, you know, I, I will push for and advocate, um, you know, for a plan that meets the needs of our community. And that's, those are multiple needs. We have a changing community, not only from a growth perspective, but from a demographic perspective. Uh, and, and we want to, we want schools that, that, that show, that demonstrate that, that balance that out, that address, you know, I've said multiple times, we don't, uh, it is not our desire, uh, to do realignment plans over and over and over. It is, it is not, um, not at the top of my list of, uh, the most enjoyable parts of the job that I do. And I do enjoy most parts of my job, um, but it is difficult. It is challenging. And, um, you know, I will say the silver lining in all that is I learned so much from the process. I learned from the board members. I get to do some teaching in the process too. Um, but with teaching always comes learning. And, uh, so you hear from the community, uh, you hear from stakeholders involved. And I think that's, that's always the beauty in it and relation, great relationships come out of that. So, um, so I always appreciate the relationship piece of it. Um, I do, you know, I want to advocate for, um, you know, utilization and creating schools that reflect our diversity. I also think that program choice um, plays a huge factor into what we do as a district. You know, you guys have heard updates on program choice. Uh, we have 13, about 13,000 students that are involved in that now. And um, there are major implications um, uh, that we have to consider uh, if we go away from the IPT recommendation based on that. So, um, but I'm very open and, and have been from the very beginning uh, to answer questions, to ad adapt uh, what we need to adapt. Um, but we have to make sure that Harris Road is set up uh, for the next uh, years to come. We have a remodeling that will happen uh, in our capital plan at Northwest Middle School uh, that will give us 300 more seats. And beyond that, we do not have a middle school on our capital plan. Um, so we have to be able to, to be ready to um, address capacities from the point that we, it may be another 10 years before we have a full scale middle school, maybe even longer uh, built in our community. And so that, that has to be taken into consideration because of the growth that we have in our, in our community. So. Uh, with that, just please send me what you need. I'll be glad to respond to that as I have for the last eight months on those questions, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, and um, just, uh, again, I'm here to, to answer questions and address the needs of our community. Brian, I just want to clarify one thing, because I think it's something that was said, and I know Tim alluded to this, but the application process that took place, uh, I know they spoke that they didn't have anyone. 
but I was thinking that the application process went out to every person who was within that affected district. Is that correct? They did. Yeah, the, it was. Uh, it was the applications for the public advisory committee uh, were uh, advertised via Connect Ed to all uh, stakeholders to every single household in the in the district. Uh, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of, I want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 22 or three applications. We were looking for a team of about 12, uh, about, about 10 to 12. Uh, we landed on um, 11 or 12, and I think we had somebody drop off in that process. Uh, we could not have someone that represented every single community and subdivision in Cabarrus County because that would have been probably too large of a team. But what we ensured in the selection process, uh, what we look for somebody that could be um, uh, objective and look at both sides of the coin. Uh, and could be open-minded, uh, so that was part of the process. We also uh, wanted to make sure that we had a representative that was from every school district that was impacted. Uh, so we did have some uh, a parent that was from Harris Road. We had one that would uh, that lived in the Jay and Freeze area, one that lived in the uh, Winkler area. So it was from represent every school uh, and potential uh, school school zone that was impacted. Uh, we had uh, represented. We had a a very um, it, it seemed to be a very diverse um, group of folks as well, uh, male, female, uh, different ethnic backgrounds, um, so in, in very different perspectives. So, um, and they uh, they were, uh, I, what I perceived very objective in the matter, it really gave uh, amazing feedback in the process. Okay. Ms. Adcock? I don't have anything else. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did. Okay. So I guess just to uh, make sure there's, that's really clear, were there more applications than what there were selected people? Yes, there were um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 22 applications and, um, and uh, I think 10 to 12 that were selected. Uh, again, I think someone, uh, we had one person that dropped out after they were selected. Um, and we never, we, after multiple contacts, we, we just never got a reason for that. So. Um, and uh, there, there were multiple areas. So there were multiple area school areas um, that were selected. So we were we were being when we selected representatives, we were making sure that was balanced um, by the schools that were impacted. Um, and then there were um, there were some people that didn't fill out the application, or some people that that demonstrated based on their responses that um, kind of questioned the objective nature of of their responses. Okay. All right. With that, Brian, do you have any type of recommendation or is, would there be a problem with having, you know, I guess on Monday night, and we've never done this before, but we've never, to my knowledge and not during my time, had a group to actually put forth a plan uh, regarding a redistricting uh, plan that's being looked at. I mean, I guess it's to the board if we would like to have one, them to choose a representative to come and speak on Monday night we have it on the agenda you know for the decision and we can I mean we can definitely table that decision that night I want people to understand that even though we've said that there will be a vote that night it is just regarding the realignment we can we could do anything we need to do for that realignment plan and we can table the decision would we'll do is that what the is that the pleasure of the board is to have a representative to come and speak to it yes sir there's a public comment session it Monday is. Too, That's anyway. exactly what I was talking about. Yes. So anybody from the public can come talk to us. I'm sorry. Yes. Anybody from the public yes. can talk to us anyway. So. Well, but the the situation is they you know at the most they're going to have five minutes. So I'm I'm not sure if that's. But gonna, they can request more than that. They can request. The board has to give uh, the leisure to that. So, yes. So they probably have to tell us how long it would, how mm -hmm. long that presentation. So would. It, um, I'm not sure if they actually have a person, but I guess I could reach out to a couple of them that spoke and asked if they would be able to designate a speaker on their I'm behalf. I'm sure they're listening right now. I'm sure they probably, probably are. Already so for those that you are listening, maybe you need to absolutely <laughs> decide who that person is. <laughs> right, right. Um, and that, that maybe that's a really good idea. Uh, you know, I, I would like to hear as well. I'm not sure, though, should we have Cropper here so that he can... Um, speak to that do you feel like you have enough information I'm sorry maybe if Cropper can be available by video or phone or something like that just in case there are any questions mm -hmm. I don't know if that's that'll cost us additional if that's the case I don't know that I would want to do that but I think do, does the available. board think that's important to have him available I mean yes absolutely the only question that 
I can think of right off the bat that I have because the biggest difference in the totals was the diversity. I would like for a true definition of diversity because that's where you saw your big difference, the five points or four points. Mm -hmm. I would like a definition of what they figure for diversity, what, what their definition of that is. Ryan spoke to that at one of our um, meetings where we talked to, talked through um, what was happening with each plan. And I, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, that's about the program choice that you're talking about. That's, that's part of it. But really, the the diversity was was looking at the the demographic. We use the term demographics, um, so it was really looking at the demographics of of each school. Uh, we do analyze that through program choice as well. Um, but it was the overall demographics of each school. Um, so it was a, a very, and, and that's really um, a, a fairly straightforward uh, explanation. So I'll be glad to send that. Okay, yeah. is, it, is, it, uh, is it of the school then? Because you really can't do it in the future because you don't know what a subdivision is going to be until it's built out or something. I mean, uh, but are you doing it? How do you determine it? In the future, well, we, we know we know the students that we have now, so we're able to do it based on the students. So you're doing it on what that popul. That's what I'm saying. How do you do it? I mean, you're doing it on that those numbers. Yeah, we'll, we'll show. You, well, I can show. Yeah, if you can. I can send you the chart. Okay, it's been in, okay. in all the data that we've supplied, and oh, I'll, okay, I'll resend okay. that so everybody has that front okay. and center. Yep. So it sounds like we really do need to define uh, some different or refine some questions that have been asked, uh, Ms. Carpenter. I think you need to probably send that one as well, okay. and just let's formulate another um, <coughs> list of questions to Brian and then if we can get I guess one of the speakers that would like to speak on their behalf and um, you know I, and I guess it would be a good idea to have Cropper ready to yeah and I do like the idea of doing that during public comment I think mm -hmm. creating mm -hmm. a, a form to do that then then if you do that and then a, a plan a different plan is put forward that impacts another six neighborhoods then you would have to do that for mm -hmm. that group and then if they put forward a plan that impacts other neighborhoods then you have to do it for that group mm -hmm. so what we've tried to maintain through this process is 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 equity we've, mm -hmm. we've tried to treat every group the same um and so that so i do think you know doing it in an existing format is is a good idea so that so we kind of maintain the equity in the process okay so i would ask that and I'm sure they are listening to us, that they decide who they would like to speak on their behalf. We'll do it during public comment, as usual, continue our, our procedure, and then have Cropper available in the agenda time frame that we would have been discussing that as well. How's that? Is that good? Or is every Ms. Sandage? One last, one last question. Um, Mr. Shaw, so normally during public comments, we don't ask questions. Um, is there some different format we would need to follow if we have questions or are we allowed to ask questions? Because that was specifically what they asked for tonight, too. The bottom line rule is that you can do whatever you want. Uh, I think the thing to think about is, is, as Mr. Schultz identifies, is what precedent are you setting, if any, for future circumstances? And maybe no precedent. Maybe this is... You know, just because somebody suggests another plan, maybe that doesn't mean that every time somebody suggests another plan means that maybe this is very particular and is really not a precedent. Uh, uh, I think the general rule in public comment is that the board does not respond. I don't think that's a, uh, certainly no legal prohibition. Mm -hmm. It's just generally a good idea uh, to avoid back and forth. It's, they're clearly defined. There are times when the public speaks and then the time when the board speaks. So uh, you can do it any way you want. Uh, and in a way, you sort of, by having a separate presentation, you have a precedent. But by also by having a, a five or 10 minute presentation with board interaction, that's kind of setting a precedent in a way. So just whatever makes the most sense so that the board can get the information it needs. You know, how much time do you need? Do you want interaction? Do you want Mr. Cropper to be available and participate? Um.
So if I can, I think what I would like to see happen just to keep order is to allow the speaker to speak. We can actually have the questions if you have those with Cropper during our normal time that it's already slated for the agenda. And then if we need additional information, and it sounds like we're going to, then to delay or table the decision that night to receive that information. And that way we can we can even have, you know, either move it to the uh, May work session or we could call another meeting, you know, to make to have another discussion. You know, we do need to put lots of time and effort into this. It is a huge decision. It always is. It impacts a lot of people, and, and I know no one likes that word, but it does. Um, and I want us to make sure that we're, the board is very prepared, you know, with what we need to do to move it forward. So I'm hearing we do not need a bus tour, unless, Laura, you would like to just do that individually. And I'll let the two of you decide that. How's that? Well, you, you can just decide. Y'all can work it out. That's good. We're going to have a speaker speak regarding uh, their plan. Let them put that forth during the public comment. Uh, time frame questions probably need to be addressed during our discussion time on the agenda as it is already slated that way we're not getting into a back and forth you know I, I, I'm not sure how we would even kind of coordinate that and I'm not sure that would be productive so let's start it with that since we're kind of going outside of what we usually do anyway and see how that works if it doesn't the board can we can decide what we need to do that night we can always amend the agenda to do something different that's okay um, but let's start with that does that is that good for everyone good okay any other comments or questions okay with that being said I will take a motion to adjourn the meeting motion to adjourn I have a motion by Ms. Blackwell and a second by Ms. Carpenter. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you. And with that, we will say good night to the viewing audience. Thank you for being with us during this public hearing session, and we will see you Monday, April the 19th.